Should be in the presence of the Lord. The Lord come around right the temple of the Lord to remember his death and his resurrection. This is the command of the Lord Jesus Christ himself to the church. He said, this do in remembrance of me. Whatever the prophet Isaiah hundreds of years before, Calvary, he spoke of what Jesus would suffer on the cross. And Paul writing in the second Corinthians chapter 11, writing from verse 23, he says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of Christ. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not concerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together eat to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that he may come together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. This is not a religious ritual. It's whenever we're genuinely born again of the Spirit of God that we can come around the table of the Lord to remember we were singing, Lord, open my eyes that I must see. If the Lord will open our eyes as we come around the table of the Lord that we will remember exactly what was bought and paid for at the cross. Just turning over a new life doesn't, a new leaf in your life, doesn't give us an entitlement to come around the table of the Lord. The only qualification for the table of the Lord is to genuinely repent and be born again of the Spirit of God, and be washed in the precious blood of Jesus. And when we're in that relationship with the Lord, it's an ongoing relationship. It's not a one-off thing. We walk daily with the Lord. We walk daily in that relationship with the Lord. We grow and develop. And every time we come around this table and we begin to ponder on the things that Jesus suffered for us, then we remember. He asked us twice in that portion of Scripture. This do in remembrance of him. So as we come around the table of the Lord, if you're a genuinely born again of the Spirit of God, and walking with Jesus, partake of not let it pass by. Doesn't matter what your neighbor may think. But let us walk with the Lord and let us reach out to the Lord today. Let the Lord put that revelation on our spirit. What all was accomplished on the cross. For far too long we have been robbed of the benefits of the work of Jesus on the cross, his death, resurrection, and ascension. So as we come around the table of the Lord and then up the got the cup and the bread, we'll make our confession of faith in line with the word of God. 
what the Word of God said, for Isaiah talked about it. He said, Jesus was wounded for our transgression. Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And whenever the Holy Spirit leads the Apostle Peter to quote these words, he said, by his stripes we were healed. So we're standing on a finished work today. We're not waiting on the Lord to do something. He has it all done and we want to step in. We want to flow in the Spirit of God. We want to flow in the blessing of the Lord. Say bye-bye to religion. And say, hello, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. After brothers to pass around, then after we've made our confession of faith, we're going to pray the prayer of faith. Everybody reach out and receive what has already been bought and paid for you. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Glorify yourself, Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, thank you for everyone gathered here today. Lord, as our brother will bring the word of the living God, we know, Lord, it's like a hammer that breaks the rock of Lord, if there's any rocks in our lives, or any rocks in our hearts today, Lord, that we will yield to the Word of God and have every rock destroyed in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm glad to have our brother James and Jesse with us today. So, brother, you, Amen. We've just met a few days ago, but praise God, we're one mind, indeed. we're unity in spirit, unity in the Word of God. Indeed, indeed. And the Lord said, with the brother and dwell together in unity. There the Lord commands a blessing. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. I just want to start by saying, because I was sat in the back just there, the Lord really stirred something on my heart. It was a revelation I received yesterday from the continuing message that I ministered on Wednesday. Um, See, Jesus Christ did not die on the cross for a weak church. He didn't die on the cross that we were to be beat up by every single wind, every single strategy and scheme of the enemy. He did not die for that. He died to equip us with everything we need to stand against the wiles of the enemy. And I just want to remind every single one of you here today that the Spirit of the Lord lives within you. I said this time and time again on Wednesday because it's a revelation that every one of us Amen. need to catch. See, there's been five ministries given on to the church that Christ manifests himself through. And see, apostles, we in the church, the people, have little A's. There is a big A apostle, and that is Christ. And Christ reveals himself, that nature, that characteristic of apostle through that. He has prophets, where the little P's, he's the big P. Every single one of the ministries, are apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors, these are just characteristics that Christ has that he manifests through and the reason why I'm sharing this because it's very important that we understand that we're a body and a body can't function by itself and we all need to come together in the offices and the positions that God has called us to as one because it's when we come together as one that is when we see the true demonstration of power no one was called to be a lone ranger in this wall and it's got nothing to do with my message it's just something that the Lord really placed in my heart because I really do feel that there's people that the Lord in this room is raising up for the ministry. And it's important that when you are raised up in ministry that you don't get caught in that mindset of being on your own. Because every single person in this room is a member of the body of Christ and we have to come together. A body doesn't function as one part. You can't move one part of your body without the whole body functioning together. So it's important that we have that mindset. Um, Audrey, can you get, I just feel led to this, can you get a picture of what I used to look like on the screen can you get that up is it on facebook or something it, it don't matter how long it's no rushing getting up i just kind of want to just share a little bit about myself just so you understand who 
we was talking here today. I wasn't always a Christian. I was very, very far from a Christian. I was um, once a cracking heroin addict. I was once a drug dealer. Um, I've been stabbed twice. I, I used to own firearms. I've lived that, that bitter end of life. Learning and understanding that the way to deal with situations was through violence. The way to deal with situations is by being the bigger dog in the situation. <laughs> Half of the time I wasn't the bigger dog. I'm a very small person. But the enemy, ca enemy captivated me in such a way that I was placed into so many dangerous situations, even to the point of getting kidnapped, through the, through the mindset that I had that nearly led me on to death. And see, I just want to let you know that the message that I'm going to minister today is a message that changed my life. It's a message that could be preached over many sermons because the endless revelation of the cross is, is, is there's so much to it. Even us today, we're learning more and more from it. And see, I just want to, I just want to, just really remind you that the object of our faith, what's about this here? The object of our faith should always be Christ and Him crucified, because if it's at the cross that we receive everything that we need. I just want to thank you, um, Pastor, for for inviting me here. And it's just, uh, it's amazing to be seeing people leading in the same mind about the cross, because that that's where. That's where everything flows from. Like I was saying, Christ did not do what he done on the cross, that we shall be weak. You know, for so long, a lot of the church today have been going through life, not seeing the results that it speaks about in the word of God. And why is that? It's because the object of where we're putting our faith is not where it should be. See, I just want to say prayer is amazing. It's our communication with God. But placing our faith in, in prayer is not going to get us walking in victory that Christ did. Prayer is amazing. I'm not talking down prayer. Fasting is amazing spiritual discipline that draws us near to God. But that's not going to get us to victory. You know, we really need to understand that all of these disciplines and all of these uh, uh, p positions that we take to draw near to God, get closer to God, reading your word, yes, it is a powerful tool. But without your object of your faith being Christ and him crucified, you will not see the results of the word. See, it says in 1 Corinthians 2, 1 and 5, and this is the apostle speak, Paul speaking. See, Paul was someone that gave the revelation of the cross and the grace that flows from it. You know, it's important that we really grasp onto it because Paul had a way of speaking about certain things where he sprung loads of gold nuggets for those that are really listening to catch. And especially in this verse here, it said, And I, brethren, came to you. When I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech, nor of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing amongst you except Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech... And my preaching were not by persuasive words of human wisdom, but by the demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. See, I just want to let you know that men are dust and dust shall return. There's nothing that a man can do for you to get your freedom. There's nothing by putting your faith in man that will get you anything. And Paul clearly demonstrated this in scripture with the position that he held. He said the thing I want you to really focus on. I, for I determined to nothing amongst you other than Christ and him crucified. See, we can get these amazing preachers that come up with these elegant words and the way of explaining things. But see, if the message is wrong, there's no power. You can preach this motivational that you guys are a champion, you guys are this. But you'll feel the excitement whilst you're in the church. And as soon as you leave the building, you're in the same situation. So it's important that we understand the way that God gave us to walk in victory. And it is Christ and Him crucified. That has to be the object of our faith. See, from the cross flows a place of redemption, reconciliation, justification, salvation, purification and sanctification. But see, the primary thing that I'm going to be focusing on today is sanctification. Because we really need to understand that it's our faith in the cross that gives the latitude for the Holy Ghost to move in our hearts, move in our lives and cause us to move in victory. 
Because listen, if we could do it on our own and Christ's death on that cross was nulled and in vain, we really need to understand that. Because it's very easy for us human beings to feel that it's important that we, we have to do this and do this spiritual discipline and do this and do the good works. And yeah, after that, I'm going to be created into this good human being that is going to be molded into this perfect. But that's all self. <laughs> And see, self is one of the victories that we have, one of the places that we can walk in victory from. There's nothing that we can do, unfortunately. And I know I, at the beginning of my walk, it was very, it was very uh, difficult to understand that concept that there's nothing that we can do. Because I was a person I always wanted to do. And it's our faith in Christ and him crucified that gives the latitude for God to move into our lives. The demonstration of the spirit can only move from a place from what Christ did. You need to realize that Christ laid down his life on the cross with the mission that he knew in his mind that the spirit of God was going to come to live within man. That it wasn't just going to be one Christ on this earth anymore. But many Christ, many people that Christ is living through. The whole purpose of the church is to continue the ministry of the Lord. Not to continue the ministry of each individual person, but it's the ministry of the Lord. And without our faith in the cross, then there's no latitude for the Spirit of God to move through our lives. See, it's important that we understand that every single one of us in this room, we have to go to the cross. We have to. Because if we don't go to the cross, then we're going to be walking in our own ability, our own strength. Every single wind that comes will be blown over. Every single time the enemy comes, we'll be blown over. But see, Christ has given us everything that we need at the cross to walk in the victory and demonstrate the kingdom and come against the enemy and not just come against the enemy. As the pastor said, walk in that victory that's already been placed before us. See, what the enemy likes to do constantly is play on the human's naivety. See, it's the lack of knowledge that people perish. Play on the naivety of not knowing what the truth is. Just like in the garden with Adam and Eve. The enemy came in and said, God didn't say that he said that. Playing on the naivety. His tricks ain't changed. His tricks are very much the same. If you don't know what the truth is, how is the truth supposed to set you free? You can only walk in the truth if you know the truth. By the revelation of the truth, you will walk in the identity that Christ has put in you, and that is himself. Amen. Praise God. So it says here in 1 Corinthians 1.18, For the message of the cross... It's foolishness to those that are perishing. But to us who is being saved, that's the important part that we need to listen to. Because we can, we can all hear that religious ways that, that, that a lot of people understand the cross. Yeah, Christ died for the forgiveness of our sins. Understand it for salvation. Yeah, salvation. So why does it tell us in the scripture, but to one that are being saved? People that have salvation. That that's the power of God to them. So there's definitely, clearly in this scripture, it's clear that there's more to the cross than just salvation. Everything flows from that place. If that's not where you're putting the object of your faith, and Christ is not the author and finisher of your, of your faith, you're not going to operate in this place because you haven't had the revelation of what the cross is. And I hope today, but by the word that's being shared, that the Lord will place that deposit of that revelation in you, that every single one of you will walk in everything God has intended for you to walk. Because of, it's either this, we can keep messing around, putting our faith in all these different things. Listen, Christ didn't die on the cross for us to keep coming into church and warming up the seats. He did not do that. We come into church on Sunday and sometimes it's not done in a place that, that of falsity. It's done in a place of naivety that we come, we get a message. And by Wednesday, we forgot what the pastors even said. We forgot what the ministers even said and we just continue. And then we get so drained, we get so drained. And then by Saturday, we're tired and we're like, oh, Sunday tomorrow, I'm going to get filled up again. That is not what Christ intended for. Christ did not intend for a bunch of people to gather in a building. The whole purpose was to spread the kingdom. It says that when, when the gospel is spread in all four corners of the earth, that's when he will return. How many of you are participating in that? Now, I know not everyone is called to the, to the office of an evangelist, but every single one of, this, one of, the, every single one of you in this place today have been called to the ministry of reconciliation. Every single one of you. Whether you're in the work of the ministry or not, as a believer, you have that uh, command from the Lord to spread the good news. So what else is in the cross? Today we're going to be talking about salvation. 
And I'm sure that there may be other opportunities to go even deeper in this because the revelation of the cross is, is, it goes on and on and on. See, in Galatians 6, 14, Paul said, But God forbid shall I boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. He kept giving us this understanding. So that was the message that I'm preaching today. I know it's a bit delayed, but I'm just going to go back for a minute. So that was that's the picture of what I used to look like. I was about 45 kilos. And the message that I go around with is the same message because the power is not in changing the message. The power is in the same message. Because if you preach the original results, if you preach the original message, you'll see the original results. And see, that transformation that the Lord has done in me has got nothing to do with what I can do. I'm a man that tried the, the, the mental health. I've been in mental health hospitals. I've tried the, the drugs programs. I've tried the rehabilitations. I've tried the, the psychological um, psychological help with doctors. Tried the medication, all of that kind of stuff. It never worked for me. May have worked for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, but I never truly had that sort of freedom from, 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 from the schemes of the enemy. But when I came to the cross and I realized the revelation of the cross and I came to the feet of Jesus, that's when everything changed. See, a lot of people think that I need this and I need this and I need this. What you need is one step and that step is submit to God and his ways, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Just one step. That's all you got to do. Regardless whether you come from the place that I used to come from, every single one of us has an issue. And that is an issue with the flesh. And that can form and formulate in all different aspects, in all different ways of life. So I just wanted to get that on the screen just to let you know that the message that I speak of today has that ability to transform. Because the transformation doesn't come from works. Any man should boast. It's by, by the grace of God. So Paul kept speaking about, I shall boast. I shall, God forbid that I shall boast in anything other than the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, if we step out of the way that God gives unto man, we go lead on destruction. Scripture tells us that the ways of man lead on to destruction, but the ways of God lead on to everlasting life. And see, religion is dead works. Religion will get you nowhere other than a temporary fix that will just cause you to have to go round on a hamster wheel fulfilling yourself from man's deeds, but never truly feeling that contentment, that satisfaction, and that fulfillment that we should have as human beings. Every single one of us, you can take it off the screen now, bro. Every single one of us, are creatures that have a creator as creatures we have this desire for fulfillment wherever we find it it is what we desire as human beings but see every human being was supposed to have a relationship with the creator and we can find fulfillment in all these dry places, all these rural places, whether that be in careers, drugs, alcohol, going out, your friendships, your relationships, your houses, your assets, all of that stuff. But I promise you, if that's where you put your faith, and that is the object of your faith, you will find yourself going around on a hamster or having to chase after these things time and time again. But see, the place that we're speaking of, Christ and him crucified is a well that is deep that never runs out. That you will constantly be hungry for more, but you will constantly be filled. Flowing from that place of fulfillment, knowing who you are because of what Christ done at the cross. There's a reason why Paul kept speaking about the cross, because that is, should be the object of our faith. That has to be the place that we operate from. All these spiritual disciplines are amazing. Do them. They will draw you near to God and you will, you will go deeper with the things of God. But the place that we need to operate from, the, the foundation of where our faith should be is Christ and him crucified. That has to be the foundation. Because as Christ said, those that build their house on the sand, winds will come, the house will blow over. But those that build their house on the rock, and that rock is Christ and him crucified, and his finished works, they will stand strong through all the storms and all the situations. And I really want every single one of you to walk in that. Because if you walk in that, then we will walk in everything that God intended us to walk in in the beginning. And we will be built back into that place of Eden, back into that place of oneness. It was at the cross that we got that reconciliation. It was at the cross that we got brought back to Eden. See, God's will never changed from the beginning when, when Adam and Eve were in oneness with God, in perfect harmony with God. That is God's will that's never changed. It went on another course, but it comes straight back at the cross that we've been brought back into the Garden of Eden. Christ wants to be manifested through you. 
But for that to happen, you first need to allow your foundation to be Christ and him crucified. My computer just doesn't know. In 1 Peter 2, 24. Who himself bore our sins into his own body on a tree. That we having died to sins. Hello. Died to sins. The word of God does not lie. There's a place that we can get to. That isn't about all the fancy motivational I am speaking. There's a place that we can get to where he is in us. It's not about us. The I am stuff, all of that motivational speaking just pumps up self. We're supposed to die to self and let Christ live through us. Because it flows from that place. That we may live righteous by whose stripes we were healed. See, when Jesus Christ was on that cross, he died for every single thing that has dominion over you. He died that that addictions can be ceased. He died that that those things that you may not talk to other people about can be ceased. He 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 died that he can put every single proclivity, every single infirmity on himself for you. But if you don't have that revelation and you're not placing your object and your faith in the place that Christ said it is finished. Because he didn't say that on like a half measured portion. He said that on a full measured portion. That if you really understand what he said at that cross. It is finished. Then you're going to walk out. And you're going to be set apart in a way. That will cause people that you encounter in your workplaces. In the streets. Whatever you do in your free time. To want to know more. Just like it was in the book of Acts. Where people come running and say. How is it that we must be saved? See the book of Acts is our template. It is our template of how we should operate as a body. But see, a lot of people think the book of Acts is finished. The book of Acts is still ongoing. It's just not being written down like it was. We really need to walk this out. For too long, the church has been seen as a religious sector of that Jesus stuff. You know, that Jesus stuff. But let's live it out. Let's not just be like that Jesus stuff. That Jesus that lives within you coming out. It is his desire to manifest through every single one of you. It says in the scriptures that to know the love of Christ is to receive the fullness of God. What is the fullness of God? The spirit of God that lives within you. When you have the revelation of the love that Christ had for you at the cross of Calvary, you will receive the spirit of God to have latitude in your life to operate and move that you will walk in the fullness of God. He wants you to decrease to a point that it's no longer you that's seen. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. He didn't, he didn't say that scripture. Uh, Paul didn't say that scripture for you to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to speak that over myself. Yeah, that's an amazing scripture. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. But from a place of death, he wants you to walk that out. So you're living it in a place of life. You're living it out. He wants you to read these scriptures and be like, that's part of me. That's, that's what's going on for me. It was never meant to be read in a play. I, I, I want every single one of you to read this scripture, read scriptures that you haven't read and be like, whoa, that's happening in my life. Because that's the place that God wants you to be. God ain't stopped moving. We stop seeking. That's what the issue is. We stop walking in the place that we should walk in, operating from the place that we should be operating in. And we just started to see Christianity as a building affair. But we're meant to take this stuff on the outside. He died to bore your sins onto you. There's a place that we can operate from that is victorious from sin. There's a place that we can operate from where sin no longer has dominion over you because what Christ done at the cross, because the bloodshed that he done, you can be purified and sanctified and walking out this stuff that it says in the scriptures. It wasn't just for the apostles. It wasn't just for the first century saints. It's for today. But we must understand that if we don't have the knowledge and the understanding and the revelation and we're not reading the word for ourselves, please don't just come to church and expect the pastor and the minister to read this for you. Because you'll never know what the truth is for yourself. Because someone could just stand up here and interpret something and give you their own personal revelation of it. But if you don't have your own personal revelation, you're not going to walk you out. Really encourage you to read this word for yourself. Because that's what really matters. Your own relationship and your own revelation with God. That you can walk in everything God intends you to walk in. It says in 1 Corinthians 1.17. For, for Christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words. 
least the cross of Christ should be made to no effect. If you preach the original message, which is very simple, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that anyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See, it is at the cross that we get everything that we need. Paul understood that there's nothing that he needs to add to it or anything that he needs to take away from it. There was nothing that he needed to add to it and nothing that he needed to take away from it for God to operate with his original message. See, a lot of the times we can find ministers thinking, how is it that we can, how is it that we can make the message better, more exciting? But see, it's not about the message being more exciting. It's about what the truth is. And the gospel is very simple. That when we place our faith in Christ and him crucified, and we believe that he's the son of God, and we believe that he died on the cross for our sins, and we believe he's coming back again, and we operate from that place, that he has sent his spirit because what he done at the cross to allow us to be the temple, to allow us to stand in the presence of a holy God because his finished works. It is then that we can walk in everything God intends us to walk in. We need to really understand that it's not a difficult message. We're human beings that make things difficult. It's a simple message of faith. See what it is, is, is faith is a substance that is unseen. Faith is something that we can't see, that we place our, we, we place our, our hope into, to, uh, and we, we place our hope into God. We place our hope into God to move. We place our hope in God to change us. See, it's something that, naturally can't be truly understood and because of that we like to work in a place in the natural to, to to make things right and so forth but we need to operate in that place of faith because without faith we don't have the currency of God to move it in our lives through our lives and to other people because that's the truth Christ wants to manifest through you to you and for other people and yourself and in order to do that it's all done in the spirit. It's not anything that we can do in this world, in ourselves. Praise God. Galatians 5.24 And those who are Christ have, been crucif have crucified the flesh and with it its passions and desires. I'm telling you, there's a place that we can get to. All we need to be doing is placing the object of our faith in the place that it needs to. See... When we partake in the cross, we also partake in the resurrection. And when we partake in the resurrection, the old self dies and everything becomes new. The place that we come to is not understood by the world because it's not a worldly thing. We become born of God. That what gets deposited in us is brand new and fresh. And we literally become a new species on this earth that may seem insane by the world, but the fruit is manifested through us. We can get to a place where sin no longer has dominion over you. If there's anyone in this room right now that is suffering with anything, I promise you, today, if you really understand this message and you open up your heart to it and you start to walk in it, put your faith in it and you'll see the, you'll see the results. See, the ways of man lead on to destruction, but the ways of God lead on to everlasting life. And see, everything that we need is at the cross and every revelation that we need is already in the word. There's no, there's no, there's not, there's nothing that we can catch outside of the word of God. Everything that we need to walk in victory is given to us in here. We need to not only have that relationship with God, but we need to be in here. A wise man once said, I said this on Wednesday. If we have all word and no spirit, we're dry up. If we have all spirit and no word, we're blow up. But if we have all word and all spirit, we're grow up. And that's the place that God wants to bring us into, spiritual maturity. That we're not just coming into church to get filled up and go out again and be dead by the time we get on to next Sunday and come in and do the same thing over and over and over and over again. He wants to build us up into a place. Church, coming into a building is about coming in, receiving and going out and releasing. We need to be releasing out there. Because like everyone in this room saved. What about everyone out there? We need to allow Christ to be manifested through us for others. Not only ourselves, but through for others. Of course, God loves you and wants to manifest through you, uh, in you, for you. But there's also a place that he wants to continue his ministry through every single person that comes to him. That's what's needed. 
It says in John 1, 7, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, and have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Hello? It doesn't say some sin. Hello? It doesn't say that, okay, you're going to have to pick up your cross and carry it. That does not talk about sin. Picking up your cross and carrying it is not about a sin burden. That is not a place that God intended you to walk in. He did not die on the cross for you to still walk out and be beat up by the wiles of the enemy. See, if we walk in the flesh, we're going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. But if we walk in the spirit and the way that God intended us to walk, I promise you that a life change will come forth. I remember when I first started walking out this stuff, I thought I was going insane. Like something was going to fall and something was going to collapse. But it doesn't because of when God's in the mix, things change. It doesn't make sense to our natural mind. It's all done by faith. We can't logically work all of this stuff out. We can't work it all out in our intelligence because you'd be sat there and you'd probably go crazy like Albert Einstein. <laughs> you know? First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, this is another one. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. We need to understand the importance of repentance. Reportance, importance of repentance for the fact of sanctification. See, what God will do along our, on all of our walks, because it's an ongoing process, sanctification, we may walk and something will come up and we're getting to a place like, God, oh, I'm so glad that you revealed this to me. I'm gl so glad that you revealed this situation to me. I'll, I'll come to you right now. I'm so, uh, forgive me for this. And cleanse me. And you'll find that, that that thing that you were suffering with will go fly away. Then God will bring another thing forward. And show you more and more. The narrow, the, the more you walk with God, the narrower the path gets. You know, you get to a point that, yeah, thank you God for that. And then it will reveal another thing to you. And it goes on and on and on. But it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing that we don't need to be condemned for. Christ didn't come into this world to condemn us, but to save us. We don't need to uh, allow the enemy to natter in our ear and um, try and beat us up about our, uh, about our this and that and this and that. Listen, Christ has got us on a road of sanctification. It says here, cleanse us from all unrighteousness everything all of it not some all of it but we must be willing and open and teachable and humble enough to recognize the issue confess the issue and then walk in that sanctification we all make mistakes but it's important that we allow the spirit of the lord to work and do due course in us because if we choose to walk away from it then we're going to grieve the holy spirit and the Holy Spirit's going to be lifted. And we don't want that because we want to walk in everything that God wants us to walk in. But we must be open to being changed and sanctified. See the things that we hold on to. I was saying it. I was saying it uh, on Wednesday with Jesse's testimony about when the minister was on the thing. And the minister was talking about how he should let go. People should be let go and all this stuff and hand it over to the Lord. And he was like, yeah, my money's yours, Lord. My time's yours, Lord. Praise God. You know, like one of them people like, yeah, I'm walking in this message. Like I can just be smiling and happy and saying amen to everything. I know that we've all been in that place before. And then everyone started walking to the front. And the Lord said to Jesse, he's like, what about your feelings? And then he burst into tears and ran to the old one. We praise God for that. See, God wants to bring you into a place where you're humble enough to recognize your need for a savior. We all need a savior. Because if we didn't need a savior, he didn't need to die for us. Romans 8, 29 and 30. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. That's for every single person in this room. That he may, might be the firstborn amongst many brethren moreover whom he predestined these he also called and whom he called these he also justified and who he justified these he also glorified the purpose of the church in Christ dying for us primarily was that Christ can be multiplied on this earth and see, it is our duty and our walk that every single one of us are partaking in that molding and that shaping and that purifying to the point that Christ is seen in us. See, a lot of the time we can get so excited about the gifts, the prophetic, all of this kind of stuff. And that stuff's amazing. It is needed in the body of Christ. There's a functionality for that stuff, of course. 
but it shouldn't be our focus on what we're putting our faith in. So many times we go around, and I know there's a lot of people that, that go from minister to minister to minister seeking a word from the Lord. When you can get a word from the Lord yourself, you know, they, 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 the Lord does operate in that way. He does operate in that way. But that shouldn't be our focus. It is important to acknowledge that we are all called to be conformed into the image of his son. And just in that, another part of the cross, and I'm going to briefly touch on this because I feel it's necessary, is that in, in Romans 5.1 it says, Therefore, having justified by faith that we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you guys, but I've done some pretty dark stuff in my lifetime. Really dark stuff. I, I used to live a very bitter life. I've done some stuff that I'm not particularly proud of. But I want to let you know, no matter what it is that you've done in your life, no matter what it is, there's justification for you at the cross. You know? There may be some people in this room that are holding on to things from their childhood, from their past. I know that for a long time I was. Some things that we've done that we're not particularly proud of that we probably won't reveal to anyone or don't want to talk about it to anyone. I want to let you know that image it like this, you go into a courtroom, you've got all of these allegations up against your name. We have two choices. We can stand in our own ability and our own strength and be stood against the law and allow ourselves to be judged against the law and foul epically because no one in this room, even myself, can hold against the law in their own ability. Or we can place our faith in Christ, be transformed and changed and we are justified according to what he's done. We are justified according to his finished works. We are justified not by what we've done but what he's done. It's not anything that we can do that we shall boast. You know, there's not going to be anyone that's, that, that, that gets into judgment or there anyone that can stand and say, it's because what I've done is why I'm justified. Not one. Everything that we have is through the works of another person. And I really want to let you know that you can have peace with God and through peace with God flows peace with yourself. When you have peace with God, you'll find a peace that surpasses all understanding, even with yourself. I was once a man that could not sit with myself for five seconds. I was once a man so... At, if I was out floating around, I'd have momentary, uh, momentary escapes where I would be around other people, uh, placing on a mask, placing on uh, all of these kind of uh, characteristics to, 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 to survive in a world that I was dying in spiritually. And then as soon as I'd go home and I'd have that moment where I'd just rest with myself, I'd have to go and take drugs or, or do something to fix how I feel because of the lack of peace within myself because of the person that i become. But I'm here to let you know that from a place of peace with God, when you're justified by faith and you have that revelation of who you've become, you'll not find peace only with God, but find peace with yourself. Both come hand in hand. 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says... But we all, with an unveiled face, beholding as a mirror the glory of the Lord, being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. One thing that the enemy likes to do is, when we go through some trials and tribulations, he likes to be like, oh, where's God now? Where's God in this situation? Oh, God's left you. God's not speaking to you. You ain't, you ain't had a, 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 a touch from the Lord. You haven't been in a situation where you've heard from the Lord in a very long time. Is he even with you anymore? And one scripture that I'd like to bring with you, it says, it says, for he who has begun a good work in you, he will complete it until the day of Christ. Now see, when you go through them trials and tribulations, the golden nugget that I want to give you guys is to remind yourself of where God's brought you from. Because if he's brought you from somewhere, he ain't stopping the job as long as you're focusing on him. He will, sometimes we go through trials and tribulations and we believe it on a natural, natural way to be quite harsh. But see, our ways are not his ways. We need to understand that every trial and tribulation we go through is for the edification of ourselves and our character and our fruit being manifested. We go through situations to really allow ourselves to be squeezed, that new wine could be moulded in us. And see, it's all for the same purpose, that we're to be changed, conformed and purified to the position we get to that is just like Christ. Christian is little, little Christ one, like one. We're all supposed to hold that image within us. We're all supposed to hold that fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. There's only a thing that can be done. Of course, it's by the power of the Holy Ghost. We all know that. But the Holy Ghost can only operate in our lives through our faith, object of our faith in Christ and in crucified. That is what gives the latitude of the Holy Spirit to move in our lives through that revelation. 
So it is by the power of the Holy Spirit, but through that place where we put our faith in. So I just want everyone just to stand up for a moment. And I just want you to close your eyes. And I'd just like uh, uh, you to just play some strings in the back, if you don't mind. Thank you. For you all to close your eyes and just for a moment, just take a moment with you and God. Because it's not about anyone else in the room right now. It's about you and yourself with God. See, sometimes we can get so caught up in religion, so caught up in coming to church, so caught up in everything that Christ come to destroy because of the flesh, because of our desire to want to do to gain. And that is not what Christ died on the cross for us for. He died on the cross that he can transform you save you reconcile you to the father that every single one of you can walk in a place where you have that revelation that you're a temple of the in you're a temple of the holy spirit he is indwelling inside of you some of you might not be walking out what we spoke about today and that's okay you know, that's okay. That's what services like this are for, to remind you of what maybe you already know or you didn't know. For an opportunity for you to bring yourself back into that place that you should be in, with Christ at the centerpiece, Christ as the cornerstone. That we don't get so, so caught up in our workplace, what we're doing, the person that we're becoming, but everything that he is. And listen, without any trying to look around to see who's putting their hands up or without any consciousness of someone seeing you put your hand up there is no judgment within this room right now zero if anything all that's in this room right now is the grace for you to be changed if there's a position that you're in right now that you need to give off to the Lord and come back into that place I want you to raise your hand right now it's okay you don't have to worry about anyone around you have a moment to think about your life and the position that you are in. I'm not going to make you come forward and embarrass you. I just want you to stay in that place, but I just want to acknowledge you. I see your hand. Is there anyone else in this room that wants to dedicate their life to the Lord and walk in everything that we spoke of today? Because of what I spoke of today is not something that's come off of a script. This is something that I live myself and I know that other people in this room walk this out too. It's something that you could all walk in. It doesn't matter where you are in life right now. God's not saying, come to me, those who are strong. He's saying, come to me and let me strengthen you. Just spend that moment with him just a moment, just reflect. I just ask right now, Lord, that you'll move on the hearts of every single person in this room right now by your spirit. Allow your glory to fall in this place right now. Allow the manifestation of your glory in this place right now. Lord, that your heart, the hearts of the people will be convicted by your spirit, not for condemnation, but for sanctification, Lord. That they can acknowledge themselves before you. Because that's what it matters. It's not about a man. It's not about a person. It's not about a minister. It's not about a pastor. But every single human being is dust, O oh Lord. And dust which you return. But you're the important. You're the cornerstone. So guys, if that's you that this message is for today to bring yourself back into a place, I just want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come before you. Right now. Exposed before you. That you can carry me through because I can't do it in my own strength Lord I believe that you died on the cross for me I believe that you rose on the third day I believe that you are coming back for me Lord forgive me of the path that I've decided to live and bring me back onto that path with you 
I renounce every scheme of the enemy. I renounce every lie over my life. I renounce every strategy he's put before me. And I declare that that stronghold will fall now in Jesus' name. Lord, you're my fortress. Guide me. Send your spirit right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.